Who is the loved one? Allah. Who is Ar Rahman? Allah. Who is Al Manan? La ilaha illa Allah. Muhammad is Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger. To Allah is our return. La ilaha illa Allah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله استفاك وتحرك واستفاك على نساء العالمين يا مريم قنتي لربك واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين ذلك من أنباء الغيب نوحي إليك وما كنت لديهم إذ يلقون أقلامهم أيهم يكفل مريم وما كنت لديهم إذ يختصمون إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة منه من أسب المسيح عيسى بن مريم وديها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين ويكلم الناس في المهد وكحلا ومن الصالحين قالت رب أن يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له قم فيكون ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة والتوراة والإنجيل ورسولا إلى بني إسرائيل أني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم أني أخلق لكم من التين كهيئة التين فأنفخ فيه فيكون, فيكون تيرا بإذن الله وأمره الأكمه والأبرس وأحي الموتى بإذن الله وأنبئكم بما, بما تأكلون وما تدخرون في بيوتكم إن في ذلك لآية لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين ومصدقا لما بين يدي من التوراة وليحل لكم بعد الذي حرم عليكم بعد الذي حرم عليكم وجئتكم بآية من ربكم فاتقوا الله وعطيعون إن الله ربي وربكم فاعبدوا هذا صراط مستقيم فلما حس عيسى منهم الكفر قال من أنصاري إلى الله قال الحواريون نحن أنصار الله آمنا بالله واشهد بأننا مسلمون ربنا آمنا بما أنزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ومكروا ومكر الله والله خير الماكنين سنك الله ومولانا العظيم وبلغ رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكدين والحمد لله رب العالمين تشيد ذات فرام شابتر 3 verses 42 to verses 54. At this stage it will be appropriate just to give you the translations of the verses and the passage that is there. Chapter 3 verse 42 onwards. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, God has chosen thee and purified thee, chosen thee above the woman of all nations. O Mary, worship thy love devoutly, prostrate thyself, and bow down in prayer with those who bow down. This is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which we reveal unto thee, O Apostle. By inspiration, thou wast not with them when they cast lots and arrows, as to which of them should be charged, 
with the care of men. No was down with them when they disputed the point. Behold, the angel said, O men, God give thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, held in honor in this world and the year after, and of the company of those nearest to God. He shall speak to the people in childhood and in maturity, and he shall be of the company of the righteous. She said, O oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man had touched me? He said, Even so, God created what he will. When he had decreed a plant, he but said to it, Be, and it is. And Allah God will teach him the book with wisdom, the law, and the gospel, and appoint him an apostle to the children of Israel. With the message, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, in that I may make for you out of clay, as if it were the figure of a bird, and read into it, and it becomes a bird, for Allah's need. And I heal those born blind, and the lepers, and I quicken the dead, by God's need. And I declare to you what you eat and what you store in your houses. Surely there is a sign for you, if you did believe. I have come to you to attest the law which was before me, and to make lawful to you part of what was forbidden to you. I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, so fear God and obey me. It is God whom is my Lord and your Lord. Then worship him, this is a way that is straight. When Jesus found unbelief on their part, he said, Who will be my helpers to the work? God said, the disciples said, we are God's helpers. We believe in God and do not bear witness that we are Muslims. Our Lord, we believe in what thou hast revealed and we follow the apostle. Then write us down among those who bear witness. And the unbelievers plotted and planned, and God too planned, and the best of planners is God. Wamakaru wa makarullah wa Allahu khairun makiri. Chapter 3, verse 42 to 54. The Shaykh that was. The first part of the program will be taken up by both our speakers, each one of them sharing or allocating 45 minutes to them, and a further 10 minutes as rebuttals. The topic that will be discussed, the nature of Christ in Islam and Christianity. The final part of the program will be the question and answer, commonly known as a Q&A session, where the audience where you will have an opportunity to pose questions to both the speakers. Please restrict your questions to the matter on hand, that is, the nature of Christ in Islam and Christianity. I'm instructed to let you know that, the questions, that any other questions pertaining to any other subject matter will not be entertained. However, I might want to add as well that you could forward these questions to the relevant speakers after the program, or should you wish, you could send it over to the Islamic Propagation Center International in Durban. Their addresses appear on all their newsletters, which I see you have copies of. Without further ado now, I now call upon Mr. Alan Prophet to address us for the first 45 minutes of the program. Mr. Prophet. Salams and welcome. It's good to see you here, and uh, thank you for coming out. It's obviously a, a very interesting topic looking at um, the nature of Christ in Christianity and Islam. To assist you, I have prepared a PowerPoint for you so that you'd be able to see this because I'm going to be reading the Bible and I do want to be able to share that with you. And so that is my intention uh, this afternoon. So as that comes up, you will see um, the, 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 the things that I'm saying will be coming forward. Shukra. For those of you who bought the paper yesterday, you would have seen that exactly 50 years ago, something happened on the 4th of October, 1957 when the Russians put a spacecraft into space. And for the first time in our history, 
people were able to communicate with each other internationally, nationally, and across the world. Today, it is so common to see cell phones. You've all got one. Who hasn't got one? I'm not selling them, but uh, please put them off because we don't want people to be communicating. But you know, I can send an SMS to someone in the UK. I can send an SMS to someone in America. I can talk to someone on a cell phone. Often I just phone someone and they answer in another continent on a cell phone with a cell phone. And th that was a significant thing. But I want to tell you today that the birth of Jesus Christ was more significant. The birth of Jesus Christ occurred in Bethlehem and that birth has changed the course of history. And so in my d debate I'm hoping first of all that you've had a spiritually rejuvenating Ramadan. That this has been a good time for you. And I thank you for being here. I do also want to point out, as you can see on the screen, that Surah 471 tells us that Christians are not to exaggerate in their claims about the truth. They need to say everything about the truth, about Allah. And really, that is my intention today, to tell you the truth, um, according to your own Surah 471. I am not here to exaggerate. I'm not here to use hyperbole. I'm not here to use extension of your mind or anything else. My talk is based on the Holy Bible. And I'm going to be talking about three particular things. The aspects of this discussion as I see is Jesus Christ, His humanity, Jesus Christ, His divinity, and Jesus Christ, the reason why He came to earth. <coughs> because that encompasses the whole of the Bible. So in my 45 minutes I've had to be selective. I can't refer to every passage, but you will understand that I'm trying to be selective and uh, <coughs> target focused. If you read the Bible, and I do want to encourage you to read the Injil uh, and to read these passages, you will see that Jesus Christ was born according to the Gospels. He was born uh, at the time uh, of Augustus Caesar. I want to read a passage from um, Matthew 2 verses 13 to 15, which just tells you, even as a child, uh, he was seen as a threat to Herod and the political powers of that time. I would like just to read the story. We have started with Mary and we're going to continue with Mary. So, when talking about these wise men who came from the east, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. That's the foster father of Jesus. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. So you can see, friends, that even from that time, Jesus Christ seems to have been a threat to people, to communities. The things that I want to point out that everything that's recorded in the Bible about Jesus happens to normal children. They grow up. And that's what happened to Jesus. He was hungry. 
Many of you have been fasting. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. He slept in a boat when there was a storm. He shows total emotional involvement with people that he met. The blind, the beggars, the poor that came along. He felt pity, compassion for them. He understands us, as Hebrews says. He sympathizes with us as a, as a person. And then when you read the Gospels, and you can read these passages, I haven't got time to read everything, but to say to you, Jesus did die. He suffered a real death. And this is clearly attested for us, uh, both uh, by medical doctors who've been studying the Bible, but particularly John, in John 19.34, when he talks about the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, piercing Jesus' side. So, and, and the separation of blood and water is mentioned there, which I understand is a medical fact. But today I want to really focus on Jesus. The unusual birth announcement. It's different. It's dramatic. It's unique. No one else has ever had a birth announcement like this. Perhaps you'd like to think back to your own birth. I know you were not very conscious at that time. But did the world celebrate? Did, did, were the angels in the sky singing praise to God? Was there something different? And even the most significant uh, political leaders today would say that their birth was very insignificant. <coughs> you read Luke chapter 2, and I'll just read it for you. There were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You know, Christ, as we know, means anointed. And in the Old Testament, we know and we read about prophets, priests, and kings who were anointed. So here we have the title Christ, which is seen to be the anointed representative. He is the one who comes to do what neither the people of the Old Testament nor the appointed representatives could do. And he comes in to show us that God is actually very concerned about this world. That there's a huge problem in this world that requires divine intervention. And that's why Jesus Christ is, has come. When I study the Bible, and let me tell you, I have read the Quran three times and the Hadith once. The, this Hadith version here, of the Hadith, I've read that. Um, but I am trying to understand the Quran as much as I can. I think it's only fair to understand what you people believe. And therefore I do um, read the Quran, but I'm also encouraging you to read the Bible because you can't really understand what Christians believe unless you prepare to read the Bible as well. But I want to say that even at 12 years of age, we find that Jesus and his parents went to the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. They went up to Jerusalem you can read that in verse 43. Somehow, in a big party of people, it often happens with children, I've seen it in families, you think that the one son is with this part of the family and the other one thinks they're with the other part, and suddenly they all look around and say, where's that boy? Well, that's what Jesus' parents did. Where was Jesus? Well, he was somewhere in Jerusalem, so they went to go and look for him. They looked everywhere, they probably looked on the streets, they looked where little boys of 12 would be playing, and there was no Jesus. Surprisingly, they find him in the temple. And he is talking to the priests in the temple. And he sort of says to them, 
Didn't you know I need to be about my father's business? He knew at 12 years of age that he was an appointed man, an anointed man. He had work to do for God. And he himself made so many claims. And these claims appear throughout the Gospels. Whether I choose to read Matthew's Gospel or the other Gospel eyewitness reports that we have of the life of Jesus, whichever one I choose, I find similar statements. So there seems to be a consistency in the, in the witness report. Jesus says, All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Matthew 11, verse 27. In John 10, there's an interesting account, and really I wish there was more time for me not to have to rush through. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone Him. But Jesus <coughs> said to them, I have shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone Me? And the Jews say, We are not stoning you for any of these, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. John 10, verse 30 to 33. In John 5, we read these words. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. There seems to be quite a clear relationship between what Jesus says uh, and His understanding of who God is as His Father. He has no doubt that this Father is, uh, has sent Him. Hebrews, a book written to the Hebrew Christians, says the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. After He provided purifications for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in Heaven. You see, my friends, Jesus is something special. <coughs> The angel's words to Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. If you read that in Luke 1 verse 35, you can confirm that's where I took it from. I just want to make this point, that He is not the Son of God, but we call, the Son of, we call Him the Son of God because He came from the Spirit of God. I want to say very emphatically today, He is not a physical Son. God never, ever excuses this language and sexual intercourse with Mary to produce a Son, Jesus. To Christians, that is blasphemy. We do not believe it and we do not accept it. The angel says to Mary, He shall be called the Son of God. That is what the angel said. I want you to just point out the difference between the word Son of God and Child of God. In my research, I found that the Arabic words Ibn, Ibn and Walad, Ibn meaning son and Walad meaning child, the Ibn refers to the child you adopt, while the Walad means it was born of you. So, therefore, we never call Jesus in Arabic, 
Walad Allah. He is called Ibn Allah, meaning he came from God. A man born in Lebanon is known as the son of Lebanon. A man who is born in Egypt is known as the son of the Nile. A man who has education could also be seen to be a, someone who is uh, a son of education. So these illustrations help us to understand that this is not meant in a physical sense. Christ is called Son of God because He came from the Spirit of God. Christians believe that God is one. We will affirm that forever and a day. We believe that God is one. Today I want to ask you the question, why is it that we want to reject the crucifixion of this man who came from God? Anybody who writes a thesis or a book and spends or in that thesis has one third of his content on a subject must that tells me that that thesis is fairly important or that third of that thesis is fairly important to that man and yet when I study and I read in the Quran I don't see any emphasis on the crucifixion. There's one surah, surah 4, 171, which completely tends to deny the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, both in the Quran and in the Hadith. I do not find these questions, I do not find the discussion. I do understand clearly in my research. <coughs> that when you read the introduction to Yusuf Ali in the Holy Quran uh, and a C17 the Arabia of the Prophet peace be upon him <coughs> was a dark place because in this introduction by uh, Yusuf Ali it says others before him have been born in darkness beyond the reach of history others again and pleased Allah to send as messengers preaching working in the dim twilight of history wherein men fashion legends after their own hearts and dimly seek a light afar, remote from their lives, mean and sorrowed, such as they are new. So, the question I'm really asking is why is the crucifixion not so important? Of course, for the Christian, it's, it's our message, it's our good news. And if you look at the, at the prophecies, particularly, and I'm just going to take you to Isaiah uh, 53 today. Because Isaiah 53 is the magnus opus, uh, we believe as Christians, of what was prophesied.